morning. morning. New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Deacon uh, Green. Washington. Washington. So good to see you. Absolutely so good Green to see you. Is out of the Deacon Green is out of town today. That is correct. That is correct. And we are so delighted that you all have decided to join us for Sun School here at Greater St. John Missionary Baptist Church. We're located at 101 North Adams, South Bend, Indiana, where Andre A. McGee is our beloved pastor. And I do believe we have a good lesson for, uh, yes, we do. for you all today. We're coming out of the book of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ezekiel is somewhat of a mm, tough book to get into. Yes, yes. Yes. And uh, yes. I was reading where the commentator uh, Matthew Henry was saying that uh, some portions of it is so deep Mm -hmm. that an elephant can swim in it, but then some of the sermons are so plain that a lamb can wade in it. <laughs> and I, I, I like that when they said that. So um, so we're going to get into our lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, but first of all, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts. I always thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, for blessing bringing us from a mighty long way. Yes, we thank yes. you for uh, taking care of us in 2023, and we ask your blessings for the year of 2024. Yes. We ask that we come more closer to you and do your uh, what you would have us to do to be the Christians that you have called us to do. And uh, we just pray for strength and mercy and grace for ourselves, our families, our church, churches all over the world that are open in your name, yes, oh Lord. We just yes. give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Okay, De Deacon Washington. I'm used to doing it with Deacon, Deacon Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so the title of our lesson is, uh, we're coming from the book of Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. The title of the lesson is God's Divine Glory Returns. Our, our four verses are Ezekiel 43, 1 through 12. Our aim for change says, by the end of the lesson, we will comprehend the vision of God's holy and merciful glory in the temple, associate a sense of holiness of place with the presence and mercy of God, and grow in respect for the sacredness of worship settings. Mm -hmm. Our keep in mind verse, so the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And that was Ezekiel 43, uh, 5. All righty, all right. So are we ready to uh, jump, into, uh, jump into our lesson? Okay, we're going to be coming out of the uh, NLT. Did you want to do the people, place, and times and background first, or you want to do the, the script nope, first? Whichever, whatever you want to go first. Let's do uh, people, places, and times, and then I'll do background, and then we'll jump into the verses. So all right, go. that sounds good to me. Absolutely. <clears throat> the people, place, and times. Uh, Ezekiel uh, was a priest and a prophet. He was mm -hmm. one of the, and uh, have your mind right to really get into to it, to right. really understand, understand it. it yeah. Understand it. Like it was, I say, it's so deep, an elephant could wade well, in it. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you read about that. Yeah. So, uh, that was uh, Ezekiel. And his purpose was to bring a message of hope, to bring about a new awareness of their dependence upon God, because we know the Israelites were God's chosen people, but they had gotten away. Yes. And so they had to be punished, and God did punish uh, them, just like today when we are disobedient. And we know God's word. We have it here in his holy book, right yes. here, all yes. 66 books. Mm -hmm. But back then, the Israelites, they didn't have anything to go by, but they had the prophets and the messengers, and they still didn't listen. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And so uh, he was supposed to bring a message of hope. He was supposed to bring about a new awareness of their dependence upon God. And he was to help the exiles understand why they had been taken captive. Yes. They didn't understand that. And then uh, he was supposed to let them know it wasn't just for a short while. Yeah, cool. It was for a duration, yes, 70 a years. Of time, right. 70 years, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So he had a message. And he had something to do that God had sent him to do. To do. Mm -hmm. All righty. Now I'm going to touch a little bit on the background here. In the final section of the book of Ezekiel, there is a special focus on a, the coming restored temple. These visionary narratives provide a glimpse of God's plan for his land and his people. Mm -hmm. Here we can see Ezekiel's priestly concerns and knowledge 
come into play. The temple was described in architectural terms in the previous chapters, and as such, it is empty and lifeless. Now the glory of God came to the temple. As a result, the temple was full of life. Ezekiel then begins to talk of what that means for those who serve and worship in the temple. Since the glory of God is now present in the temple, mm -hmm. its worship worshipers must be holy. It must mm -hmm. not continue to, to be business as usual. As <laughs> priests, Ezekiel stressed the holiness that is required by God and they put in the way of all things that would defile the temple. Mm -hmm. And what it's, what it's telling us right here is uh, the background is telling us what Ezekiel was dealing with on his own mm -hmm. when because that was his personal relationship with God where God was telling him mm -hmm. the things that you guys have in this temple right now was mm -hmm. defiling. Yes, yes. Because they absolutely. had their fake idols right next to God. Right, <laughs> right. I'm like, and absolutely. they had just a wall there. Yeah, absolutely. Just had a wall absolutely. dividing them. Absolutely. And absolutely. God had to let Ezekiel know we can't have this. No, we can't he have said, that. Mm -hmm. I need my people to turn back to me. Yes. So I so he can breathe life. Yes. back into them. That's it. And that's, that's what it. they he wanted to breathe mm -hmm. life back into mm -hmm. them. Because mm -hmm. as, as our Pastor McGee always say, we're dead. Yeah, right, right. If we don't have the spirit of God inside of us, right, right, we're just right. dead. Right, right. And without the presence of, of God, God, like you say, we're dead. Yeah, and we're God dead. is light. And God is He's light. light and life. Mm -hmm. He's both of them. And that's absolutely. what exactly we did. He, would to breathe, <laughs> he wanted to breathe life back into us. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. And I was looking at this at a glance is broken down into three parts. Uh -huh. The return of glory, uh -huh. and that's Ezekiel 43, verses uh -huh. one through five. Number two is the second, I mean, return uh -huh. to the glory. Uh -huh. That's verses six through nine. Uh -huh. And number, the last one, the requirements for glory, uh -huh. which is uh, chapter, I mean, verses 10 through 12. Right, absolutely, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so now we'll start with our verses coming out of the uh, NLT, Ezekiel 43, 1. After this, the man brought me back around to the east gateway. Verse 2, suddenly the glory of God of Israel appeared from the east. The sound of his coming was like the roar of rushing waters, and the whole landscape shone with his glory. Four, this vision was like the others I had seen first by the Kabar River, and then when he came to destroy Jerusalem, I fell down on the ground, and the glory of the Lord came into the temple through the east gateway. Five, then the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner courtyard, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Verse six, and I heard someone speaking to me from within the temple, while the man who had been measuring stood beside me. The Lord said to me, son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place where I will rest my feet. I will live here forever among the people of Israel. They and their kings will not defile my holy name any longer by their adulterous worship of other gods or by honoring the relics of their kings who have died. They put their idol altars right next to mine with only a wall between them and me. They defiled my holy name by such distasteful sin so I consumed them in my anger now let them stop worshiping other guys and honor the relics of their kings and I will live among them forever son of man describe to the people of Israel the temple I have shown you so they will be ashamed of all their sins let them study his plan and they will be ashamed of what they have done describe to them all the specifications of the temple including its entrances and exits and everything else about it. Tell them about the decrees and laws. Write down all the specific specifications and decrees as they watch so they will be sure to remember and follow them. Verse 12, and this is the basic law of the temple, absolute holiness. The entire top of the mountain where the temple was built is holy. Yes, this is the basic law of the temple. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. <clears throat> Taking verses 1 and 2 together, it says, Afterward, he brought me to the gate. Now, uh, he is a, um, a radiant man or some uh, angelic being. The gate that looked towards the east. Now, that's very important because um, 
After Ezekiel's visionary tour of the temple, Ezekiel is brought to the east gate. Although Yahweh could have entered any gate, choosing the east gate was deliberate. In Ezekiel, you'll find in Ezekiel 11:23, we see God's glory departing mm -hmm. through the east gate. So now we see his glory coming back to through the east gate. Yes, yep. And uh, it says here, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters. Mm -hmm. He had this big thunderous roaring voice that caught your attention and says, and the earth shined with his glory. Without the glory of the God of Israel, Ezekiel's temple was nothing more than a building. Yeah. We talk about I that said, all yep, the time. It's a building. Yep. Uh, the, uh, where we are right now, this is a building, building. of mortar and stone and mm -hmm. clay. But it's the people that make, make the it. church. Yes. The people that yes. make the church. So, and with God being present in the church among his people, because mm -hmm. that's where God is, with his people See, this in the church. And uh, so without God's presence, you just have a big old building. Yeah, just a big, <laughs> like you said, an empty building. An empty building. <laughs> so God has to be present uh, uh, in the building. Mm-hmm. And we, another thing about this gate, let's talk about this gate just a little bit. This gate was very important, the East Gate. This gate is also the one in which Jesus rode on a donkey on Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. You'll find that in Mark 11, 1 through 11. Another example of God's incarnate glory entering the temple. And uh, you'll also find um, uh, on the East Gate, direct to the east of the Temple of the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. both of which have momentous biblical significance including both Jesus' agony, you find that in Matthew 26, 36 to 39, and his agony and his parting accession, you find that in Acts 1, 9 through 12. So this gate has a lot of significance. So yes. he chose to yep. enter through the gate and depart through the gate. Mm -hmm. So um, the word for the east in Hebrew also means first or at the beginning, indicating that God's glory has existed since the beginning in its primal first and fundamental form. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I want to say too, before we get too far in it, Ezekiel's name means God's strength. Mm -hmm. God has strengthened. Yep. And the prophets of old, I mean, they had a rough road. Yes, they did. They had a rough road. They were hated, they were tortured, they were put to death and all of that. But through it all, his prophets still proclaimed his word, word. which was mm -hmm. very prophetic. And that is just, absolutely wonderful. So we have to give the prophets um, a hand clap for staying, doing what God had called them to do. To do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And it says, and according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, and the, the vision here is, uh, it is a, um, there's a concept of the visible, tangible glory of God, Shekinah. Now this could have been the Shekinah uh, glory that we're talking about here, but we know it did not come to the second temple right, though. Right. So we know it did not come there. Mm -hmm. But it says, and it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision which I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Shabar, and I fell upon my face. Now when I saw that, I fell upon my face. Mm -hmm. I uh, underlined that <laughs> because even though uh, Ezekiel had seen these visions before right. from God. He did not let this become so commonplace to him that he became complacent. He was still awestruck by the very presence of God, yeah, yes. and he fell in adoration and worship. worship. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should do when we are filled with the presence of God. Yeah. We don't become, take his presence for granted. Just like he's going to do what he always what do. do. No, 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 we no. We become complacent. Yeah, we become yeah, complacent. complacent. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I like when he said, and he just fell on his, his knees. face, face. Mm -hmm. just from the glory of God. So the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. The house. And that is absolutely wonderful. It says down here on page 187, if you all are, have your precepts here, it says, uh, for New Testament believers, God's glory is usually an intelligible, intangible concept, but we are not without examples. And then they start giving you some examples 
of God's glory. One would be correct to say that in the Christian era, Jesus' veil of humanity was removed momentarily during his figuration. Remember when he was on the mountain with his uh, refiguration? Uh -huh. Revealing the glory of God. You find that in Matthew 17, 2. And it says here, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as the light. Yep, that's right. Absolutely. So uh, they got a chance to witness his uh, glory. Okay. Amen. All right, we'll go to uh, verse 6, and it says here, they must treat the glory of God with reverence. Mm -hmm. It is not enough that God's glory has returned to them. They also must return to him. They must put away their wardom and their carcasses and memorials of their kings. This word is not just the common people of Israel, but also for her kings and leaders. What God is saying to in, in these verses is that he will not share his glory mm -hmm. with anyone else. Amen. He will not be worshipped alongside other man-made gods, Amen. whether they are statues or, or men. God's glory will return to the temple, but mm -hmm. Israel needed to return to him. Mm -hmm. that, that's the part we got to remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. God, God is mm -hmm. going to return to the temple, but mm -hmm. he wants his people to return to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And without his glory, they will be just like they would be just like the temple in the absence of his glory, a lifeless shell, which means just like this building. Yeah, God's yeah. presence wasn't here. It's just an empty building. Just, that's just what walls it is. Mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. pews in here, yeah. but nobody here. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And then when we go over and it says, uh, Ezekiel does not behold God directly, but rather he hears him from within the, ho the holy of the holiest. Mm -hmm. His glory makes it beyond man's ability to, ability to perceive him directly. And see, I love that part. Mm -hmm. His glory makes it beyond man's ability yes. to perceive mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. directly. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that goes to tell us mm -hmm. we have to be in a relationship right. Absolutely. with God to Absolutely. truly understand Absolutely. what God is saying. Absolutely. Because if you are not walking down the street just kicking in, you know, boom uh -huh. box going, doing uh -huh. all that, we're not going to understand what God, what, what somebody is trying to tell us that God meaning. Right. Or, or um, some people say, you know, God spoke to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And God told me to tell you. Yeah, tell you. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be looking at it like, okay, well, why God doesn't tell me? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> God didn't absolutely. have to come tell you to absolutely. come tell me something. Absolutely. 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 But I, I feel that if, if you have a personal relationship with God, mm -hmm. you will understand the things that God wants us to do. Absolutely. And even with our lives today, we're just like that now. Mm -hmm. We know what God wants us to do, but we mm -hmm. still find a way to do our mm -hmm. own thing. Yes. yes. In our own mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and in our own way. There you go. And we need mm -hmm. to change that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And Absolutely. It, and it says here, God dwells in heaven mm -hmm. and earth mm -hmm. and cannot contain him. Mm -hmm. He still, he chooses to dwell on earth. Yes, yes. Thus Absolutely. said the Lord, the heaven is my throne mm -hmm. and the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. Where in, is this house that ye build unto me? And where is this place of my rest? Mm -hmm. See, I love that part. He said, yes, the earth yes. is my footstool. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So that tells you right oh, there. That's, that's powerful. That's some powerful stuff right there. That's it's powerful. powerful. Absolutely. That, that was actually verse 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go to uh, verse 8 and 9. Well, verse 8, mm -hmm. God reminds Ezekiel why his presence had departed from the people because of their cumulative, cumulative and collective sins presented by their spiritual wardom, mm -hmm. which is another word for adultery. Mm -hmm. In this illustration by the temple example, the corruption of the temple was a sign of the overall moral corruption of the nation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And see, mm -hmm. that, that, goes, mm -hmm. that goes back too. We can look at here and it says, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me see. He would dwell in with them forever. This is God's desire and plan. Mm -hmm. And and this is the true reason mm -hmm. the temple is to be rebuilt. God wants to be with his people in a life-giving and sustaining way. Right. Which, right. Which, which is telling us right here that if God wants to be with us, why can't we open our eyes and just go ahead and accept God and mm -hmm. be with God? And because right now it's saying the corruption of the temple was a sign of overall moral corruption of the nation. Right, right, right. God right. wants us to be a part of him and wants us to have a personal relationship. Absolutely, with him. absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and that, that old saying where uh, uh, 
the devil is in the church. Mm -hmm. Well, the devil is in here. The devil's not in the club because he already got them people. <laughs> he got them already. So why he going to be somewhere where he already got them? That's why God comes up in here and try to, co I mean, uh, the devil comes in and try to co confuse people and make a mess right. of things. Right. And that's right. why we have to stay prayed up and put all our faith and trust in yes. God. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And also, these people uh, back then, they were, like you said earlier, uh, Deacon uh, Washington, they were really defi yeah, defiling, they were defiling the temple yeah, they were because they the were uh, burying their kings mm -hmm. on the temple grounds yeah, yeah. and doing all type of uh, corroded things. Mm -hmm. And it just God wouldn't, wouldn't stand for that because God's temple is holy. Yes. And just like our bodies are holy, and when we give ourselves to God, he intends for us he intends for us to be holy. Yes, but we know that holy. we're just man, and mm -hmm. uh, that's what, why we have to stay connected, like you yes, said we earlier. Do. We, gotta stay we have connected. to stay connected, stay in a good relationship. Absolutely. Then I'm going to take verse 9 and 10 and put those together. Mm -hmm. Now let them put away their wardom mm -hmm. and the carcasses of their kings mm -hmm. far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house of the house of Israel, and they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. Mm -hmm. I love this. He said the prophet's mm -hmm. message is continued even beyond the time of mm -hmm. the prophets, and even into mm -hmm. our current day and age. Yeah. The message of the prophets has taken similar forms throughout history of faith, but in the theme barely varies. Yes. Turn from the death of evil and turn to the life of God. Amen. Ooh, Amen. Turn from Amen. the death of evil. evil to the I, life. No, I read that yesterday and it just really hit me. Right. What right, it just right, said. Right. Right. Turn right. from the death of evil mm -hmm. and turn to the life of God. Mm -hmm. Put sin out of your heart mm -hmm. and purify the, your temple mm -hmm. so God will dwell within you. And mm -hmm. see, we got to realize what they're talking about when they say our temple. Yes. They're talking about our body our right body. now. That's We're it. We're not talking That's about it. this building. No. He said our right. temple mm -hmm. and God mm -hmm. is going to come in and purify our bodies. Yes. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. God can dwell within us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in today's ultra uh, succinct gospel, mm -hmm. in a nutshell, repent and be saved. Repent and be saved. That's all you have to do. That's all repent you got to do. and be saved. Absolutely. And we all know we out here doing something wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We do it. But there comes a time God going to slap you upside your head. Yeah. If you keep doing the exact same thing over, over, and over. Right, right, God right. going to forgive you, uh -huh. but he's going to slap you upside your head a couple times and let oh, you yeah. know you're not going to keep oh, making yeah. the same mistake. That's right. That's Something's right. Something's going to have to change. Something's going to have to change. That's yeah. what he did with the people of Israel. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why... Uh, they were his beloved chosen people, a yes, special people, but they were so disobedient. He said, oh, no, I got to yeah, do something. I so do something. He had to. He had because to. Because they weren't listening. That's right. Absolutely. That doesn't mean he doesn't love us, but mm -hmm. just for a moment, he's going to let us, you know, see how it is without him. And, and he also let them know, he said, I want you to let them know so they can look and see how ashamed they're going to be of themselves. Right, absolutely. After they see that, when it, mm -hmm. he says it right here, mm -hmm. he said the use of the word ashamed <laughs> as the purpose of the vision stands to start contrast or modern thinking, which tends to avoid the subject at all costs. And mm -hmm. see, we do that today. Yeah. We try to mm -hmm. avoid situations. <laughs> And we'll try yeah. to do things our own way right, right. without following what God tells us to right, do. Right, right, and, uh, right. And I got can... that bad too, because Paula would tell me, uh -huh. you be up there teaching that, you need to practice that too. We all human. Yeah. We right. all do stuff. Right. And then we'll we get up here, we do stuff, and then we gotta think about it. Oh man, I just I just taught that lesson. And I'm sitting up here doing exactly what right. I just said. A that absolutely, thing. absolutely. But but that's the human. But in we us. all fall short. Yeah, we all call, fall short of the glory of God. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's absolutely. us. Absolutely. That's it. That is us. Absolutely. Now absolutely. verses eleven and twelve. It says the ultimate disaster for Israel mm -hmm. was the Lord's departure. Ooh. Even captivity mm -hmm. by her enemies did not compare to his absence. See, that tells you right there. Tells you, right there. you can be in prison, mm -hmm. in captivity, mm -hmm. but if God is present, is not with you, mm -hmm. that's worse than anything. Absolutely. We're Absolutely. Just like you said, we're, we're dead. Yeah. We're, we're nothing. We're just a lifeless self, mm -hmm. 
selfless people. Absolutely. With no absolutely. respect for anything. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if God is not with us, we're just like um, Ezekiel in chapter 37, mm -hmm. the dry bones. The dry bones. Yeah, yeah, that's all we got. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just bones. That's just it. dry bones. And until yep. God spoke to them and the bones came to life. Yep. So God got to be with us because he gives us life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And it says here, the ultimate blessing for Israel would be his permanent return. Mm -hmm. The element mm -hmm. on which both departure and return hinge was Israel's faithfulness mm -hmm. or her f mm -hmm. faithfulness. As mm -hmm. a result, it is not enough that the people be aware of God's return. They must know everything involved with the temple, including the design, which I, I love how he said that. He wants mm -hmm. he want them to know the exits and the entrances. Yes, yes, He yes, want to know yes, the laws yes. and the teachings associated with it. Yes, yes, yes. Which referred to the instruction originally laid out through Moses. Through Moses. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus came not to destroy the law mm -hmm. and the prophets, but to fulfill them. Mm -hmm. And we can find that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel promises that God will restore the blessings associated with him originally through Moses, yes, both yes. his presence and worship. worship. Mm -hmm. you see, and that's what we got to realize too. Mm -hmm. We can't have one without the other. That's true. We that's can't true. have his presence and then just say we're not going to worship him. <laughs> we have to have his presence and we have to worship God. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we can't have one or the other. We can't pick and choose which one That's we want. true. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then it says here, many today are in self-imposed exile mm -hmm. and prison by their own bondage. Ooh. And that's amazing right there because before I really knew what God, who God was and what Jesus Christ did for us back on Calvary, uh -huh. I was one of those people in prison in my own bondage. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes we yes, all yes. were. All were. Because that's why they say Absolutely. we were all born into sin, yes, so we didn't yes. know. Mm -hmm. It's only one person that was born without sin, and that was Jesus. That was Jesus. All Absolutely. the rest of us was born into sin. And it says here, and he held and, uh, bondages and held in bondage mm -hmm. by their addictions and profane habits. Not so different from the people of Ezekiel's time. See, mm -hmm. that goes, that yeah. goes, that's how, even back then, mm -hmm. we're still doing the same stuff today. Some things don't change. Yeah. Mm -mm. And, mm -hmm. what, and uh, that's why we call this the living Bible. Yes, yes. The living, yes. Because it's the same back then, yes. it's going to be the same absolutely, tomorrow, and absolutely. it's going to be the same two mm -hmm. weeks from now. Absolutely. It's going to be the exact same. Things don't change. Sometimes just yep. the name, that's it. And it says absolutely. here, they are in desperate need of hope of God's glory entering mm -hmm. their temple mm -hmm. and evicting their darkness and sin. Mm -hmm. By receiving him, they experience the sacred place of God's glorious presence mm -hmm. within their hearts. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. That's we need what to we put need to God do. in absolutely. our hearts. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. See, oh. this lesson, we, we can mm -hmm. keep going on and on with this lesson because this is deep. <laughs> Because I found Absolutely. a whole lot of other stuff. We could keep going on and Absolutely. on and on. Absolutely. Just talking about Ezekiel. I didn't realize just how deep Ezekiel really is. Yes, 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 yes. But he, to me, Ezekiel like a poet. Uh-huh. Because uh -huh. the way he he talks and the way he, he uh, speaks on God, it's like he just flew it with poetry mm -hmm. when he does it. Mm -hmm. It's just natural mm -hmm. form. Right, 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 he just, right. Yeah, he's just a man. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's, yeah. Yeah, Ezekiel. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I wish uh, we had more lessons in Ezekiel because he had a lot of visions and yes. he did a lot of things. And uh, he was just really sort of hard to understand, but uh, he stayed true to God's message. Yes, he did. Uh, God's message of hope and God's return. So mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. Absolutely. I'm going to read the in focus real quick here. Okay. And it says here, I really, when I read this over, I was like, wow, I got to, this is really nice right here. The in focus. Robert had not been to church in a long time. Mm -hmm. When he bumped into his childhood friend Joyce at the grocery store, he mm -hmm. was convicted. She talked about the new pastor and the way certain people were growing in the church. He was even jealous that some of the young people from whom he had seen in diapers were now actively serving in the church and passionate about the Lord. Mm -hmm. In spite of all his career accomplishment and financial wealth, he knew that something was desperately missing in his life. He decided to go back to faithfully attending church starting this Sunday. Mm -hmm. He had come to Sunday worship a little early and no one was around. Mm -hmm. He saw the empty pews that reminding him of what it was like to be in the service worshiping with the with the people of God. Robert felt overwhelmed just being there in silence. 
As he walked down the center aisle, a surge of emotion came over him, and he remembered the days when he was passionately following Jesus. Tears began to well up in his eyes. He knew this was what he was missing. Mm -hmm. Although God is everywhere, certain places remind us of his presence and encourages us to live holy lives before him. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. That, that, is, that is uh, beautiful. Yes, just just like uh, right now, some people are still electing to stay home and uh, mm -hmm. view the church on TV, TV. or YouTube. Mm -hmm. But uh, even though we said earlier, the church is just a building of mortar and stone, it's just something about being in the yeah, house yeah. of the Lord. You want to fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Yes, absolutely. It it's is. just something about that because the Bible says, I think it's Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the fellowship. Mm -hmm. So it's good for us to come together. together. It's fellowship. good for us to come together. Yes, so. it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So with that, you want to give the invitation mm -hmm. and the closing prayer? I am now extending the invitation for Christian discipleship. If you believe in your heart and confess with your tongue that Jesus yes. Christ died on the cross and rose yes. on the third day yes lord you too will be saved Amen. romans 3 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one no, romans not 3 one. 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god Amen. romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen if you're out there in virtual land Go find yourself a Bible teaching church yes, and yes. a pastor that loves teaching the Bible yes, like yes, we have yes. here. We, we call him, Pastor McGee is our pastor teacher. Pastor teacher, absolutely. And he breaks it down in a way that you're going to understand. Absolutely. Every, even when he's preaching, he breaks it down. Oh, he breaks like, it down. He breaks it down like that when he's preaching. But he do it and, yes. you, and you, you understand everything. Absolutely. But like absolutely. I said, just go find yourself a Bible teaching church absolutely. where your pastor is a teacher and a pastor. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. All right. Amen. We'll end with a word of prayer. Amen. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, God, our Father, for this opportunity to come out on first Sunday of yes. January of 2024, God, our Amen. Father. Amen. And we say thank you, God, thank our Father. You, Jesus. Thank you for allowing us this, this opportunity to see this day, God, our Father, that we woke up. It's snowing outside, but we woke up, and it's a beautiful day out there, <laughs> yes, God, our Father. Yes, Because we, 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 we woke up on the right side, God, our Father. Thank and God, our Father, for that, we say thank you, God, our Father. You, God, our Father, continue to bless our Sunday school. Yes. Continue to bless our superintendent, God, yes. our Father. And thank God, our Father, Jesus. above all, continue to bless our pastor, God, our Father. Oh, continue yes, to indeed. keep him, lead him, and encourage him, God our Father. And God our Father, bless our church, God our Father. Yes, yes. And just continue to strengthen and keep us in your bosom, God our Father. And just hold us deep to your heart, God our Father. And we ask all these things in your Son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.